started off pretty productive, I would say. Like I did everything that I kind of wanted to do so I can prep myself for the big day ahead. Today we are deep cleaning. I am deep cleaning my kitchen. I have a cleaning schedule that I set for myself that has been really working for me so far. Um, but basically I used to like clean all in one day and just knock everything out, deep clean everything, usually on the weekends, but that hasn't been working for me lately. But before we do all that, because there's a lot to do, I need to make myself an iced coffee. Oh no! disposal is I run some hot water and then I slowly pour down some um, dish soap and I keep the disposal running as well and that just cleans the disposal gets it all soapy and cleans like everything that's inside I learned that from a maintenance man at my old old apartment complex when I was like super young and then also you can put ice down at the disposal that I guess that helps sharpen your blades you can also put um, some lemon wedges down there that'll also help it smell good and some baking soda a lot of different ways that you can help like clean your disposal and make it smell good this is going to be the easiest option for me right now so we're just going to take some dish soap and run the disposal He's looking over there at the laundry because he hears it making sounds. Mommy's doing laundry. Do you want some snacks? Do you want some snacks? He's so handsome. He's so handsome. Let's put on some Toy Story. What do you say? Typically, when I'm cleaning my floors, I like to vacuum and then I like to steam mop with my Bissell. Um, today, I just wanted to do like a quick clean and let me just say, <laughs> it is so much harder to use like that little Swiffer mop thing than to just use my steamer because like you just put a lot of pressure on your back and like, because you, you have to use force obviously to like get into the dirt and clean up the floors with my steamer it just lifts the dirt off but i just reminded myself why i don't prefer to use that mop because my back is killing me so i ordered me and ian some lunch from panera bread it should be here in like 10 minutes so he gets a little snack until it's time for lunch because you're gonna be hungry huh yeah food came at the perfect time right on time huh do you want some juice? Okay, want some juice? Mom hack, if your baby is being chaotic and you can't get anything done or it's just too much, put him in the tub. Give him a little afternoon bath.
honestly just been feeling so blah like the last few months and there's just been a lot that's been happening and I figured I might as well just come on here and catch everybody up. I have a lot to say, I have a lot to tell you guys. Starting with the fact that there's no mirror here. Remember I had my big mirror that was right here? My toddler broke it. I don't know what happened, but he pulled the whole thing and it just shattered everywhere. The wood broke, the glass broke, the whole thing is just trashed, so my mirror is gone. My my beautiful infamous mirror. <laughs> I've had that mirror before even Nadia was born. Like I've had it for so long and I feel like it was like such a stable piece to have in my home and <laughs> now it's gone. I was a little bit stressed out about that. I was a little sad. Thank God nobody got hurt. There was no glass on anybody. So everybody was fine except, you know, my mirror. I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to come on here and say anything. Um, I have like a video that I took that I wanted to share but it's just kind of been sitting in my drafts over on TikTok and I haven't said anything about this situation but basically over the holidays I got pregnant and it was an unexpected pregnancy. I genuinely didn't think that I was pregnant at the time and I wasn't even sure if I even wanted to have another child to be honest with you I was teeter-tottering a lot with do I want to have another baby I don't want to have any more kids I, like, I want Ian to be my last one it's a lot but yeah we just I just ended up I ended up taking a pregnancy test did not think it was gonna say yes and it said yes. So yeah, totally in disbelief. I was not planning nor prepared to have this child. But a week goes by and I'm starting to process it all. I'm starting to accept the fact that I'm going to be a mom of four. I'm getting excited. Me and G went to Nordstrom's and we were looking at double strollers. You know, I was getting excited about having a fourth child. And it was a little overwhelming, I'm not going to lie, because... I love my age gaps as you know like <laughs> I I just I just love having my kids spread apart but as I'm getting a little bit older I didn't think that that was something that I was gonna be doing because that means I would be having like my next baby when I'm 40 and I'm not trying to do that so by me getting pregnant this time around I was like you know what like I think I can get used to this I'm a little bit nervous to have kids so you know close in age and back to back like this it's gonna be a little chaotic but you know I'm gonna roll with it and get through it and I have an amazing partner and I'm a good mom so I can do this <laughs> so I was already starting to process and accept the fact that I was pregnant with my fourth child and I was gonna have another baby and then I started to notice some spotting which I thought was like okay maybe it's a little bit normal but before the spotting I had really bad cramps like it didn't seem quite normal but I didn't think anything of it because this type of thing doesn't happen to me like I've never had um, a miscarriage before and so I didn't expect anything you know to go wrong with this pregnancy so the little bit of spotting turned into more spotting turned into blood turned into heavy bleeding turned into non-stop bleeding and now I just ended up having my period and I went to my OB to verify you know like what's going on and what happened so yeah he did check and I was no longer pregnant um, so you know me like I had to go and do my research like I needed to understand what the heck just happened and I'm still that was like part of me processing the fact that I had a miscarriage because this has never happened to me before and I didn't really know how to handle the situation so I just did a lot of research and apparently I had um, what they call a chemical pregnancy chemical pregnancies are very common So I kind of found like a little bit of refuge in the fact that like this is common. There's nothing wrong with me Like nothing that I did This is just a common thing. I went from not knowing if I wanted to have a baby to I definitely want to have one more and I was very sad to lose that pregnancy but I'm totally fine now like I've you know accepted it moved on and I'm totally okay but that's kind of also why I've just been feeling like super unmotivated and like didn't really want to like come and make like a whole personal vlog for YouTube you know 
I've just been like posting shorts and stuff like that because it's not so personal, you know, to post a short and you just film the video, a really quick 30 second, 60 second video and upload it. It's not as like, you know, personal as a one-on-one -on -one vlog and editing this whole thing out and posting it on YouTube, like a whole video. So that whole experience definitely just enlightened me, educated me, and also made me for sure confident in the fact that I do want to have one more baby. But just one more, like <laughs> just one more, you know? Um, and especially G, like he's been 100% sure that he wants to have another baby ever since we had Ian. Like, he's just like, I wanna have one more. <laughs> and I've always been like, mm -mm. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not sure, back and forth, maybe, maybe not. Well, mm, uh. but this time, like we're both on the same page, 100%, like we wanna have one more baby. Look like at the little hearts that Nadia made for Valentine's Day. Aren't they cute? I've been feeling so unmotivated with like social media. I, I don't know if you know this, but I've been on YouTube for like nine years. And I've been doing like the whole social media thing for a while now. And to be very honest with you, I've just been feeling like what I'm putting out is not being received, I guess. And I'm not obtaining the results that I wanted throughout social media. Being a social media influencer, being a content creator is so hard. And before in the very beginning nine years ago when I was just starting it like it was super fun for me And it was just like a little hobby that I did on the side, you know, as a stay-at-home mom I was just just totally dived into mom life and it was a matter of me trying to figure out you know what Dominique is aside from being a mom and for the most part I would say that I have you know, I you know, have the obviously I have the whole mom thing down to a T. I definitely started to like get back into, you know, finding me, you know, especially going through my whole divorce. That was like a really key, you know, component in my life where I was just genuinely finding myself. And I feel like I did. And now I'm back into, you know, being married and mom life again, you know, my comfort zone, everything that I like, but also brought a little bit of you know who Dominique was and who she found herself to be you know during that whole phase of her life I'm talking about myself in the third person <laughs> but you get what I mean but basically I just haven't been feeling so motivated like I said to come on and film and do social media you know anymore Hi. yeah girl I don't know I've just been feeling like I don't want to do this no more you know I know it's like what no more YouTube but there was this point in my life where back in 2019 I was feeling this way as well and I honestly I've been feeling this way since then like since around 2019 and like there was this um, time frame where I didn't post for like four months you know what I mean which is like that's a long time for me you know especially coming on here and posting at least once a week for the last nine years or so, you know what I mean? Like posting like once a week or so for the last nine years. That's a long time to not post. And now I haven't picked up the camera in like three weeks. It's all, it's feeling like, oh, I need to film something, you know? Like I need to pick something up. Like I need to upload something for you guys or upload something to YouTube. And it's been feeling just very much more like a chore rather than something that I enjoy. And I don't know, maybe like the season of YouTube is just like ending for me in my life or something is shifting. I'm not quite sure which direction I'm going to be ending up going in at this point, but they always say like, you know, whenever you're feeling a change about to happen, there's like this contraction in your life of it gets really tight and really just uncomfortable and then the shift happens and then something amazing comes out of it. So I don't know, we'll see. I'm generally just, I'm not trying to push myself, like I need to upload something, I need to push and post something on my social media accounts. It's like, if I feel inspired to do it, then I'm gonna do it. Because this is not like a job for me, like I don't get, it's not like I, I'm pulling income from making YouTube videos, you know what I mean? Like a lot of, you know, those bigger YouTubers for sure, they're obviously making money from it, but micro influencers like myself, um, the money's not there like that, unless you're like hitting up collabs 
all this all the time which I'm not you know it's it's more of just like a hobby which it's supposed to be for me but it's just like I said just become like such a chore and like a job at this point and I've been trying to like work with the algorithm and figure out like what I need to be posting so I can like gain more you know attraction on my social media accounts and I feel like I've fallen into like this limbo of like being trapped in social media and I've been so annoyed by it like I find myself just scrolling aimlessly on my phone and it literally aggravates me like I can see myself outside of myself like just watching myself just scrolling on my phone and I'm like you're so trapped I tell myself Dominique you're so trapped right now and you can see that you are like pull yourself out of the matrix baby pull yourself out of that social media trap and what started off as me trying to find myself through social media I feel like I'm like way more lost than I ever was you know what I mean Everybody looks the same on social media. Everybody's doing the same thing, you know, and it's honestly boring and annoying to watch and nothing is just authentic anymore. And even some of my content, I'm looking at it and I'm just like, that was so not authentic. <laughs> you know what I mean? And honestly, I won't even like upload it. There's so many times where I was filming something and I'm like, ew, like that was not real. Delete it. <laughs> Don't even post it, you know? And I guess like I found myself doing that more often so I was just like I need to break I need to step back and then I had that whole thing happen over the holidays with my chemical pregnancy and I was like okay we really need to take a step back you know so I don't know we'll see where life takes me at this moment like I said I'm not forcing myself with social media I'm just taking it day by day and seeing how I feel today I felt inspired to come on and you know communicate <laughs> and you know say what's on my mind a little bit but honestly that's all that I wanted to do like I don't quite even want to just take the camera throughout my day because all I'm doing is cleaning today like I need to like put the sheets on the bed do you want to see that do you really want to see that do you do you want to see that <laughs> I don't know I don't know if it's even interesting and I could do like this whole montage and make it like cute and like fun and interesting but like you know, you can obviously see how chaotic my mind is when it comes to social media right now. I don't know which direction I'm going in. I was literally just talking to you this whole time and it wasn't even recording. What I was saying is Ian has been having a lot of poopy explosions and when it comes to poop explosions, you're either, you're having those, if you're having a lot of poop explosions, it's because your baby's diaper is too big or your baby's diaper is too small. And in our case, Ian's coterie diapers are too small and unfortunately we've reached our max with the coterie diapers as far as size goes. Ian is a size 6 in coterie diapers and that is the biggest size that they have and then you have to alternate and move up towards the, um, the pant diaper and those are like the little pull ups and those are for potty training and honestly Ian is not ready to potty train yet and I'm not ready to potty train him he's not even 20 months you know what I mean Ian is just a big boy Ian is in the 95th percentile for his age group and he's already wearing 3T like he's a big dude you know what I mean and I already know that Ian's gonna be big <laughs> um, I knew he was gonna be big when I was pregnant with him I know he's gonna be big when he gets older and I can just tell right now obviously he doesn't even fit into you know at the right size diaper and these companies that make these diapers are assuming that my baby should be potty training right now at his size weight and height but we're not there yet we're not there so I had to cancel my coterie subscription I love coterie diapers I've been using them since Ian was a newborn baby I definitely would recommend them I loved them they're so soft they're like this elite high-end diaper I love them but like I said unfortunately they just don't uh, have a big enough size for Ian right now so we are going to go back to my second favorite diaper which is Pampers um, I do believe they have a size 7 I saw it at Sam's Club so I'm gonna get that for him and hopefully we can ride this out until you know we have no choice but to get like 
pull-ups. Ian had a blowout and then he was crawling all over my sheets and that's what happened with that. Is that a yummy snack? Is that yummy snacks? <laughs> like those veggie chips, huh? Yeah.